Oh my god, I clicked live stream. Good, good, good. I haven't done this in time. Starting. Stream health. Stream health sounds like something your doctor talks to you about after you hit a certain age. I see myself, and I am lagging. But that's fine. It's supposed to be like that. There's supposed to be a delay. I'm talking to myself at this point. Look at the live chat lighten up. Hi, everybody. Holy Jesus. Why don't I do this every day? Look at all this. Oh, my God. Ah. Okay, that's a lot. That's too many. Stop it. Stop talking. I'm kidding. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, I finally have a Sunday off where I don't have to make an LFR. Uh, because the Leafs didn't play last night. Uh, so naturally, I need to uh, ruin that by uh, doing a live stream. No, I don't know. I just wanted to do something. And uh, I'll answer stuff from the chat every now and then. How does this look? How does this look? Is this, not, is this smooth? Is it, like, is it like I'm glow sticking? Sorry, the reason I do that not everyone does that when they're glow sticking. We used to have this guy in my high school who had like a really long rat tail and he used to tie a glow stick into it and then had two in his hands and he would just friggin it was it was amazing. It was amazing. Don't do drugs. Anyway, looks like everyone's happy, looks good, looks great. Okay, yeah, so where are the victory puppies? The puppies are so mad at me right now. They're really not happy because I've been ignoring them because I've been setting up the live stream. But here they are. Here, so that's the snowman that they play with. That's Iggy. Hello. And that's Charlie. Hello. But I can rile them up if you want. I can rile them up. Iggy, Charlie, what's this? What's this? Oh my goodness! Charlie, you don't even like bite things. You don't know how. Iggy. Ah, bah, bah. Ah, bah, bah, bah. Come here. There you go. Iggy's so strong. And Charlie just kind of watches. Iggy. I can't wait for the next time you guys get to meet Victory Puppies. Because it feels like I never get to talk to you anymore. What has it been like once in 2018? Bullshit. I'll let you go. Here, drop it. Drop it because I gotta do the thing I wanted to do. Go get it. Okay. It's freaking dies. Okay, so um, I watch a lot of Iggy's just gonna lock in and out of the video every now and then. Um, I watch a lot of unboxing videos, or at least I've watched some unboxing videos, and every time I see it, I'm like, hey, that's pretty stupid. Um, so I thought I'd try it myself, uh, and I will show you what I'm going to do in a second. I just want to, I want to tweet out this link. How do I get a link? I want a link to this, yo. Oh, here it is. Here it is right here. So I'm going to tweet that. Live streaming right now. That was me checking spelling. Which a lot of you don't think I do. And you're right. That burp over there was Charlie, by the way. I just had a sign on one. Alright. So. The other day, I was grocery shopping with Mrs. Dangle. We were at Canadian Superstore. I think it used to be a Loblaws. I'm not sure. Um, oh yeah, someone was asking about the Habs jersey. Don't get distracted, Steve. You're at the grocery store. And I saw this. It's a little tin... Uh, it says Toronto Maple Leaf Centennial Set. It's a bunch of hockey cards. Got one Stanley Cup Championship commemorative banner inside each tin. We got Dougie Gilmore on the front. We got that... Do <laughs> He's pissed again. We got that Super Dope uh, 100 logo. They should have sold jerseys with this logo. The logo that the alumni wore in the alumni game, they should have sold. And this costs 40 bucks. Uh, 12 packs inside, 8 cards per pack. Um, card collectors are probably going to tell me it's a ripoff. Uh, I have no doubt that it is. I don't know. 
but it might be a cool collectible thing and I literally have no idea what's inside so I figure we'll figure it out together here you know what you guys asking for more dogs this is what's great about live streaming is I can just there you go who's that Charlie doesn't care Charlie's all the way over there oh he might care he might join in I just want to see what this looks like Hey, Charlie. Oh, don't move the computer. Well, that's what we look like? That's pretty cute. Okay. Let's figure this out. So, we got our cards. What do you think's in there? Oh, if you touch one of these cards, you're dead. Iggy Cavicus. Oh. Let's, uh, maybe take your call. Um, so here we go. Let's open this. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna go ahead and take off Charlie's too. Ah. Okay. Toronto Maple Leafs Centennial set. Let's go. Now, I've always struggled because I have stubby fingers, so I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna bite it. Charlie, can you bite this? You kind of have like weak teeth, right? You ever just talk to your dog like it's a person? I feel like dog owners don't realize that 90% of what they say to their dog, maybe even more, is useless. My favorite thing I saw, I saw this tweet where, you know, this guy had like a dog that was acting up. And he yelled his name. He was like, Rex! And then he mumbled under his breath, we talked about this. That's me and my dogs all the time. So, got the plastic off. <gasps> Jesus. Take off the cardboard sleeve. What do we got inside? So. Ooh. Okay, so that's actually not what I was expecting at all. I thought it would be a card. And it's not. Okay, the dogs have kind of gone away, so I'm going to sit down like a human. This is not what I thought it was at all. It's an actual banner. So that's kind of cool. Stuck to all the other stuff. It's a 1942 banner. So I guess the whole idea is to get people to buy a whole bunch of these tins so they can collect all the banners. I wonder what these go for on eBay or something like that. I'm going to check that out right now. No. No, I'm not. It's going to take too long. I don't care. You ever, you ever go, here's a good idea, and then five seconds later you go, no, it's not. It's not. Segway, Steve. We got all the cards. All the packs of cards. Let's open them up and see what we get. You'll trade me 1967? Shut up! How about that? Trade me your silence. I have this technique where I like kind of grab it from there, peel a little bit, open it like that. It didn't work at all. Destroyed the package. All right. All right. That's good. So the cards are numbered. I wonder how many there are. Ah, very interesting. Okay. Okay. So this is, I guess it's just Leafs from throughout the years. I was like, it couldn't just be active players, right? It couldn't just be active players. So we start with number 39, Phil Kessel. We got number 68, Wendell Clark. The 67 card better be good. I'm just saying. We got, here's an oldie but a goodie, 37, Bobby Bond. Scored the, I want to say the game six winner of the 1964 Stanley Cup final uh, on a broken foot. Leafs went to game seven, beat the Detroit Red Wings in seven, won the Stanley Cup, their third straight. Okay, so here's how I know they're not doing the top 100, and they're just doing a bunch of Leafs. Uh, Robert Reichel, number 48. That's pretty interesting. And then we got what I think is their first insert. We got, well, maybe not. Uh, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell if it's an insert. It doesn't really indicate. It's Daryl Sittler, card number 163. 
It says Hockey Hall of Fame on it. So I figure it might be a Hockey Hall of Fame insert. I'm really not sure. Hmm. It's kind of neat. On the back it says, Sittler, who ranks second on Toronto's career goals and points list, sits third in assists, scored at least 40 goals in a season five times, and hit the 30-goal plateau another five times. On top of that, he and Doug Gilmore are the only two Maple Leafs to ever record 100 or more points in a season, twice each, and Sittler's 117 points in 1977-78 were a club record until Gilmore eclipsed him with 127 in 92-93. That season by Gilmore, by the way, I would argue is the best season any Leaf has ever had. You're not going to get too many people arguing against that. Holy smokes, oldie. Red Horner, card number 17. Does it have his birthday? It should. Well, he was a leaf from 1928 uh, till 1940. That's a pretty decent career. Ah, yes. Born May 28th, 1909. That's unbelievable. Look at him with his, like, oven mitts. Gee. That's crazy. We're still going on the first back. Uh, Toronto, uh, Toronto-based people will love this one, especially Jim McKenney. He was on the air for a very long time. Born December 1st, 1946. I mean, he's no Red Horner when it comes to age. He's card number 49 in the series. And the last card of the pack. Ooh, is this the oldest one? Yes, it is. Ace Bailey, number two. Wow. He was a lead from 1926 to 1934. Born July 3rd, 1903. Brace Bridge, Ontario, I'll tell you, he's barely what a guy, guy, look at him, he's got his oven mitts on there, he got a couch cushions in there, he just, uh, takes a cow dung and he scores on the net and he's, yeah. So anyway. Ah, so, pack number two. Let's see, okay, can I pull it off this time? No, I already screwed it up. Nope, ripped it. I'm going to pull it off. That's my goal. By the end of this, I'm going to pull off a clean rip. <coughs> kind of got out of the card, the hockey card game for a while. Dude, it's expensive. It's expensive. All those those Klutz and Chara guys, they're like, hey, you want to pay 80 bucks to get in on a box? And I'm like, God, you know the answer is yes, but you're killing me, Smalls. Killing me. All right. I don't even recognize this guy. Daniel... Marois, Daniel Marois. He was a leaf from 88 to 92. Wow, so they're just really including anybody. Like, I thought Robert Reichel was kind of a no-namer in there. And while Marois, like, Marois had two 30-goal seasons with the Leafs. That's pretty good. But he was a leaf for one, two, three complete seasons, and then half of 91-92. So he was a leaf for three and a half seasons. And he got a card in this set. I'm very interested to see who we come up with here. Here's another guy I've never heard of. And he was a leaf for a while. Miroslav, I don't even know, Frischer? Fricker? Fricker. We're going to call him Fricker. He's from Ostrava, Czech Republic. He was a leaf for one, two, three, four, five, six seasons? What the? I've never even heard of you, buddy. Vinny Domfus. He was a very good player for the Leafs. Very underrated. Um, I guess because he had an incredible career and he did it with many other teams. Someone said, show me Jonas Hoagland. Honestly, Jonas Hoagland would be better than a bunch of the guys we've pulled so far. <laughs> okay, so here's why I think... Uh, see, I think there might be more than one insert. So Daryl Sittler's card said Hall of Fame on it, but I don't think it said... Yeah, it just says Hockey Hall of Fame on it. It doesn't say Retired Numbers. So this one is Doug Gilmore Retired Numbers. Card number 134. Retired numbers. What does it say? Gilmore, blah. Gilmore only played for Toronto a short time relative to other luminaries in the franchise's storied history, but his impact was undeniable. In addition to owning the team's single-season points and assist record, told you, he occupies the top two single-season playoff point totals courtesy of back-to-back -back Western Conference final appearances in 93 and 94, as well as the career benchmark, 77. Ace. Card number 10, my favorite. Bob Rouse. He was a leaf for four seasons. Well, three and a half. 
here's one from my uh, old like NHL 99 days. Ken Baumgartner. I feel like this guy was one of Don Cherry's favorites. He's from Flin Flon, Manitoba. All you gotta do is shout. This guy is definitely just a user-generated name. I think they made him up. John Anderson. He was a leap from 77 to 85. 189 goals, 393, never heard of Hey, okay, I think this is our first active leaf. Jake Gardner, 2011 to present. Oh, and guess what? He's card number 67. Did you really? Did you really? Why you got to do that to Jake? Look, he pisses me off too, but that's ridiculous. Man, they did Jake dirty. They did Jake dirty, that's not fun. All right, okay. I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to do it. Do it slow. Open it a little bit. I feel like these packs of cards aren't as strong as they used to be. Oh, gotta just... I did it. And you just rip it just a tiny bit. Oh, and if you wanted, you could put the cards right back in. Yes! Third time's the charm. All right. This guy's name got mentioned a lot last year. Peter Inacek. Uh I can't remember if it was points, goals, or both. Uh, you know what? I think it was points. No. So Wendell Clark had the rookie goal record, which was 35. Matthews crushed that. Inacek, I think, had the points record, which Matthews also beat. I think Matthews had 69. Nice. Inacek, as a rookie, had 66 points. That was his best total as a Leaf. He's card number 60. We got Bill Berg. Not to be confused with Aki, so don't get mad. Let's probably plug the laptop in. That would be helpful. I'm like, how much longer do we have uh, left in the stream? Let's ask the battery. We got regular Doug Gilmore. That's card number 29. So we got, it must have been an insert then. We got uh, retired numbers Gilmore. This is interesting. Okay. Card number 196, Ed Belfour, memorable moments. December 19th, 2005, Toronto. Bel uh, Belfour tied Terry, S S wow, Steve, read. Words are hard. Belfour tied Terry Sawchuk on the NHL's career wins list on November 28th with his 447th victory. Then his fifth attempt after that moved past the former Maple Leafs luminary alone into second place with a wild 9-6 victory over the Islanders at the Air Cannon Center. I don't, wow, I don't remember that. The Eagle made 27 saves in securing, <laughs> wow, so he broke a record after... <laughs> <laughs> allowing six goals and just over 30 shots. Well, you got to take it the way you get it. Uh, the Eagle made 27 saves in securing the victory that night with Matt Stajan, who had two goals and an assist, and Kyle Wellwood, a goal and three helpers, providing the offensive spark. <sighs> you know, sometimes I get mad at this team, and then I remember those teams. Someone just pointed out, I can't wait until we get a Roman Polak card. I agree. And we do have... An active Leafs player next. He is a Leafs defenseman. Ooh, and this is a different card. Morgan Riley! Number 62, and the card is shaped weird. The card is shaped weird. Was Gardner's weird, and I just didn't notice? We gotta go check this out. One second. One second. Where's, where's Mr. Gardner? No. Why is Riley shaped so weird? Look at that. Can't tell if it's shaped like a leaf or the Stanley Cup, or what is that? There's nothing on it that indicates, like, this is a special print or anything, or nothing on it, really, that says it's an insert. It's bizarre. I'm going to put that one to the side. We've got another active leaf. Austin Matthews. 82 games, 40 goals, 29 assists, 69 points. Um, now, what is the most common complaint about Austin Matthews? Uh, well, outside of Toronto, it's, he gets too much coverage. Uh, inside Toronto, a lot of people yell and scream, Ah, oh, he plays too much with Zach Hyman. 
I just got a, a beep. Dude, Matthew's card is number 11. <laughs> number 11 for Zach Hyman. Love it. Love it. I'm getting texts from people. It looks dark in your room. Hair is on point, though. Thanks, Matt. It shouldn't be that dark in my room. Here, let me see if I can fix that. Hmm. This is all something we'll figure out at some point. Shouldn't be here. I don't know. Whatever. Screw it. We're not going to worry about that right now. Matt! Come on! Breaking my flow. Who else we got? Ron Ellis. Card number 98. Ron Ellis uh, was part of the 67 team. Or at least I thought he was. Oh, he was part of Toronto for 16 seasons. So on the season, or sorry, on the back, it doesn't show all his seasons. It starts in the 70s. So I'm like, I think it was wrong. No, uh, I saw Ron Ellis live in person yesterday. So I was at a uh, Leafs versus Habs alumni game uh, in Oshawa. And Ron Ellis was the coach, the honorary coach for the Leafs. Evan Cornway was supposed to be the coach for uh, the Habs, but his flight got delayed three times or something like that before he finally said, screw it, I can't go. My apologies. Uh, oh, you know who was on the Habs alumni team? Habs alumni team? God damn it, Matt. Uh, Louis LeBlanc. And if that sounds weird to you, I'm going to look him up real quick. Louis LeBlanc. Louis LeBlanc was drafted 18th overall in 2009. So this guy was drafted in the same draft as Nazem Kadri. He was playing in an alumni game. It says he's 26. This guy's younger than I am. He's already playing in alumni games. So that was very strange to me. Um, I don't know what his deal is. He's, he's a very, it's a fascinating story. I, I would read Louis LeBlanc's book. Last card of this pack, number 57. That's a pretty good one. Terry Sawchuk. He was a Leaf for only three seasons, but he got a cup. I'd say that's pretty good. He got the last cup. And it's just great to be able to say that Terry Sawchuk was a Leaf. You know, such a legendary player. It's great to have him. The, uh, the chat has officially jumped the shark. I think this pack might be special. It feels thicker. We're about to find out. Okay. We got, like, this is vintage to some of you. Card number 97, Thomas Caberlet. R. McDavid. Man, he was a good player. He was so frustrating in his own end. But, man, he was a good player. 878 games played. 83 goals. Shoot it, Thomas! Never friggin' shot it. But 437 career says 520 points. For a defender? That ain't bad. What we got here? Frank Mahovlich, card number 64. Ironically, he was on the Leafs 64. Uh, Stanley Cup winning team. Freddie Anderson, we got our first active goalie. I mean, not that there would be many of those. Card 80. You know what's nice? No duplicates yet. I hope that's not, like, a thing. I, I would hope not. It's like one collector's tin. So here's another insert. Terry Sawchuk, who we've already got. Speaking of no duplicates, whoops. But uh, this is a trophy winner's card, and he won the Vesna Trophy in 64-65. That's interesting. Because I didn't think he was on the Leafs that year. Anyway. After Toronto edged Montreal for the fewest goals allowed in 1964-65, uh, 173-175, to Sawchuk was awarded the Vesna Trophy by virtue of having played 36 of the Leafs' 70 games, two more than crease mate Johnny Bauer. However, the pair had earlier agreed to split the cash award if one of them won, and Sawchuk stated publicly he would decline the trophy if both names were not inscribed. So, the NHL changed the rule to include any goaltender on the winning team with a minimum of 25 games played. That is very interesting. I like that. I like that. Now, this... 
why is his card shaped weird? Lori Boschman, who is a guy I had never heard of until yesterday when I saw him at the alumni game. I'm going to put this at the side, too, because his card is shaped weird, just like Riley's from earlier. This is very strange. Absolutely perfect. This better be card number one. It's not. It's number four. Johnny Bauer. R.I.P., buddy. Look at that. He was a Leaf from 58 to 70. Considering he started as a Leaf when he was 33, that's freaking incredible. He was born November 8th, 1924 in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. 5'11". I don't know about that. Uh, 189 pounds. My goodness. 475 games played. 219 of those games were wins. 160 losses. 79 ties, 32 shutouts. Rest in peace, Johnny. Is this another... Ooh, so we got an active member of the Toronto Maple Leafs and a member of the 100. James Van Riemsdyk. He's card number 59. And we got... You're not real. I don't believe you. Pete Stimkowski. And he was a lead for five seasons. He was a center in 221 games, 29 goals, 64 assists, 93 points. Sure, I'll take your word for it. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. See, this one feels thick, too, with two Cs. I don't know. I'm wanting, I just want, like, a cool autograph card or, like, a jersey card. Like, whenever you whenever you see one of these tins and whenever I'm tempted into buying one of these tins, like, I just, I know I'm being a sucker. I just... Right away, I'm like, look, I just want one insert. That's all I want. That's all I want. Card number 12, Bob Neely. Any relation to Cam? I don't know. Look at that flow, though. Jeez! <laughs> See, this is why they didn't wear helmets. One, they looked too damn good. Two, all the hairspray they used, it was just, it was basically like hardened plastic anyway. They were good. Sill Apps, card number 22. In our pursuit for the oldest leaf in this pack, uh, he is not there, but he's close. January 18th, 1915. Oldest, I think, uh, I don't remember who the player was, but it was 1903. Active leaf, Nazem Kadri, 61. Beautiful, beautiful. Career, minus 27. I'm surprised it's only that, considering some of the Leafs teams that he's played on. Don Maloney! I didn't know Don Maloney was a Leaf. Isn't that the ref? Is that the ref? Give us a couple more calls, Don. This is interesting. Okay, so we got another Hockey Hall of Fame insert. Dick Irvin. Card number 151. Irvin took over Toronto's coaching duties six games into the 1931-32 season the first at Maple Leaf Gardens, and guided the team to the third Stanley Cup championship in club history. He remained behind the Leafs bench for the next eight seasons, and while 1932 marked the only title won during his tenure, the team made it to the final in seven of Irvin's nine years. He went on to win three championships with the Canadians. Holy smokes, imagine making it to the final all those times. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. This one's near and dear to my heart. He was a big Leaf. Uh, wow, and he almost... He did get his own number. Wow. Uh, he was a big leaf during my childhood, and I scored a Game 7 overtime winner with him in NHL 99 that I still remember. Video games matter. Sergey Berezin, card number 94. Man, he was a leaf. 357 games played, 126 goals, 94 assists. He had that many more goals than assists. No one who ever watched him play is shocked. Uh, for 220 points, 25 goals, 16 goals, 37 goals. My goodness, 26, 22. That guy scored goals in an era where not a ton of Leafs were scoring goals. Man, who thought this guy would be getting on a hockey card uh, in 2017? We got card number 85, Kyle Wellwood. Man, he had potential. He was good. I once heard a GM, a former GM, talk about him. And he was basically talking about, like, everyone knew not to draft Wellwood. Everyone knew he was lazy, this, that, and the other. But, like, I mean, when you look at it, 
I mean, just looking at his Leafs career, four seasons, 189 games, 31 goals, 77 assists, 108 points. Uh, like, if he was expected to be a world beater, I don't know why. Um, I mean, he was small. He was like a mid-round pick, I think, or even like a second-round pick. That's a good player. That's a good player. I mean, maybe left something to be desired at the other end of the ice. But, like, what is what is Wellwood other than, like, Bozak before Bozak? He even wore 42. And this one, oh, I thought this was someone else. No, it's not. Norm Allman, card number 41. Man, are we even halfway done this pack? I don't even know. I don't even know, and I'm not even going to tell you. There's, I've been doing this for over half an hour, for real. All right. Okay. You know what? It's too hard to open them up cleanly. I'm not even doing it. I don't even care. Just give me one jersey card. That's all I want. That's all I want. I want a touch game-worn jersey. Brian Glenny, card number 15. I don't know a ton about you, Mr. Brian. Jim Dory, card number 56. And we will pass right over you quickly because we have... You've done it, Lanny. You've done it. Lanny McDonald, card number 34. How come he got Matthews? Why did he get Matthews? You've done it, Lanny. Look at that. Oh, baby, look at that mustache. Look at that duster. That helmet protected absolutely nothing. Oh, baby. Memorable moments. Insert Rick Vive. Memorable moment, March 24th, 1982. Vive notched his 50th goal of the 81-82 of on a first period power play goal in a 4-3 win over the Blues, making him the first player in franchise history to reach that momentous benchmark. He topped 50 each of his next two campaigns also. And only Wayne Gretzky and Mike Bossy scored more in that three-year span. That's a hell of an accomplishment, especially on the Leafs back then. In his seven full seasons with Toronto, Vive never scored fewer than 33 goals in his 0.56 careers, uh, career goals per game average in blue and white is the best by any Leafs player since 1941. Man, using goals per game and stuff? When did you become a nerd, Upper Deck? I love it. Pat Boutet? You're not real. You're definitely fake. Yeah, you know how I know? You got traded from Toronto to Hartford. Uh, hey, I loved this guy as a kid. Loved him, loved him, loved him. And he was one of my favorite guys uh, that I got to talk to after the alumni game. I got to talk to Dave Anderchuk. That was really cool, too. But there was just something about Dmitry Yushkevich. I loved this guy as a kid. I, I couldn't properly tell you why. 506 games as a Leaf. 25 goals. That's it? Uh, 110 assists. Not bad. 135 career points. Minus 12. But a plus 100 in my heart. Love you, Dimitri. There's a right-handed defenseman I can get behind, for sure. Speaking of defenseman I can get behind, this guy was the most jacked guy, easily the most in-shape person uh, playing for the Leafs at the alumni game last year, and the oldest, number 90, Boreas Salming. So that's just a plain Salming card. There's no, like... Retired number, Hall of Fame. So I guess this set does have inserts. Oh, and we got a really old school name here. And I think we have a new oldest player. Born February 25th, 1903. King Clancy. Love it. See, okay, comment there from Connor. It gets a Colton Orr card. Honestly, maybe. May like, I don't know. You never know. I don't know what's coming in this. Oh, see, I'm getting tweets from people. So, watching your live feed, no idea how the chat works or where it is. So, I'm sending it here. There are jersey cards. So, he got a Morgan Riley jersey card. Man, that's all I want. That's all I want in the world here. Here. I don't know where that came from. Let me just retweet that I'm doing this here. Let's open another pack. I thought Iggy was behind me the entire time. That's why I hadn't moved. Iggy, Charlie, come. See, now I can't even hear him jingle. Iggy, Charlie, come. There's movement. 
Come, 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 come. And here they come. Hey, boys, come. Oh, Charlie's right here. <gasps> We're starting off the next pack so good. So good. Iggy, come here. Come here. Come. You're looking all at me all weird. Here, catch. Charlie, go play with him. Charlie, you can't touch me right now. You can't ruin this card. Okay, okay. I'll give you pets with the right hand. So with my left hand, I can do card 82. Felix Potvan. Look at that. And that's, oh my god, that's my favorite mask of his. My favorite equipment. I just love you, darling. Oh my god, childhood idol. Getting to talk to him was just, uh, I mean, the interview sucked, but it was a really cool moment getting to talk to him. Hey, we have a former Leafs Rookie of the Year. Card number 70, Howie Meeker. Eight seasons with the Leafs. He had 346 games played, 83 goals. That's it, 102 points. Hmm. Mike Walton, you look old. Card number 96. He was a leaf from 65 to 71. I guess it's just an old looking photo. Look at this picture. I'm so glad they put this on a hockey card. I can't believe they actually put this on a hockey card. This is a memorable moment. Card number 187. Wendell Clark. Look at that. Man, that guy's 18 years old with that duster. That's disgusting. June 15th, 1985. The 1985 NHL entry draft was the first such event that was not held in Montreal. Uh-huh. Uh, and as it also marked the first time in franchise history, the Maple Leafs held the first overall pick. Can you believe it took them until 1985 to get that? And then once since? Twice ever? That's so ridiculous. It seems fitting it would be conducted at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. Really? That's where that draft was? I had no... Man, I've done exams there. <laughs> That's ridiculous. The team listened to trade overtures for the top pick, but ultimately decided to draft Clark, a defenseman, LOL, uh, for the WHL Saskatoon Blades, who the Leafs immediately converted to a forward, because Leafs. It's a wonder that doesn't happen more. Like, hockey players are... Have They have never been more athletic than they are. They've never been better athletes. Surely there should be more of that, right? I Like, I... Surely there are defenders who would be better suited to be forwards, forwards who would be better suited to be defenders. Uh, surely. You hear all these stories about guys who make the change when they're, like, 13 or 14 years old, or maybe they even make the ch uh, change in junior. It's not as extreme, but like Pierre-Luc Dubois, I think, was a winger up until like a year and a half ago or two years ago. And now look at him in the NHL. It's a wonder that doesn't happen more often. Shane Corson, card number 81. And this one's all cut up and weird. I'm going to find out what's going on with these weird shape ones. I'm going to find out what's going on. Here's a good one. Oh, God, I love these Leaf uniforms. That's why I loved it when the Leafs uh, changed their jersey a few years ago, back in the Reimer Cup run days, <laughs> Cup run, playoff run days. Um, it's a shame they weren't better in these jerseys. Dave Anderchuk, card number 91. Yeah, like, that's what I'm talking about. Nick Reese just said Rasmus, I assume you're meaning uh, Darlene, um, could be a forward. Absolutely. But I mean, but I mean, you want that guy in defense. Boy, I've never heard of this guy, but that's a hell of a picture. That's a hell of a flow. Rick Keogh. Card number five. Jesus, Rick, are you important? Three seasons with the Leafs. In his final season, he played 69 games. What do you think of that game total? Leave a comment down below. It's the sex number! Uh, Dave Hannon. He was a Leaf for two and a half seasons. This is what I'm saying, man. You're all joking about, like, the Colt Nor card. And this guy was a Leaf for two and a half seasons. I've never heard of him. Colt Nor might have a card. I, I just want to see it. I'm just saying. Iggy, what are you doing? Come sleep in here. Charlie Barley. Your ears move every time you say your name. Dangle, come to Kingston for a live pod. Uh, maybe. Between you and me, guys. No one else is watching. 
Uh, we've been talking about doing live podcasts for a while. We just need to make it happen. Mm, what do we got going on here? Nick Metz. Card number 24. Man, he was the lead for 12 seasons. From 1934 to 42, and then again 44 to 48. Oh, so he was a Leaf, left, and then got better again. We have a former Leafs captain, everybody. Who wants to take a guess? Anyone? <sighs> the Unfinif, card number 83. 2015-16, tour slash on. It's amazing how recently that trade was. It's incredible. We got back-to-back -back goalies here. Alan Bester. I'm hoping to get uh, the Doug Cavell card. Yo, I broke this so hard. And I legit did stab my neck after the last LFR. I don't know if you saw that. Alan Bester. Card number 141, Felix Potvin. God, that's such a gorgeous jersey. Such a gorgeous mask. Such a gorgeous man! Uh, it doesn't, like, give a description on the back. It just has a leaderboard. Record holders, single season saves. Wow, I wonder if Freddie Anderson is going to come anywhere near this. So, Felix Potvin. Wow! That's interesting. So, fifth most saves in a single season in Leafs history. Curtis Joseph, 1,744. Number four is Felix Podvin, 1,823. Number three is Frederick Anderson, 1,883, and that was last season. Uh, Felix Podvin, 1,943 saves in the 95-96 season. And then the following season, the all-time record, I don't know how you beat this, 2,214 saves. Holy moly. I don't think the Leafs were very good that year. Barry Melrose. Is that like Coach of the Kings? Like he's on NBC with the weird hair now, Barry Melrose? Is that who we're talking about? And he's got a weird shape one too. We're going to figure that out. We got one of the Leafs' current big three. We got Mitchell Marner. I don't do it as good. I'm going to put that to the side just because I love him. No, that's not true. I do love him, but put it over there dave reed i think he was at the alumni game yesterday card number 36 still haven't got jersey card nothing hey clear the track here comes Shaq. card number three you must be important wow 504 career games 99 goals 96 assists 195 points whatever whatever ho-hum 676 career penalty minutes my goodness nine power play goals <laughs> that entire time so he wasn't used on the power play what do you think eddie shack did he messed people up how many more of these packs do we got how many more do i gotta open before i open something super cool all right this guy was at the alumni game yesterday nick antropov so uh nick's son daniel uh I think he just got drafted recently or he's in the draft anyway he plays for the oshawa generals in the ohl um when i got to play in the eric lindros uh celebrity classic for easter seals this is my first game puck uh, that was like my first g hockey game ever so i got to play four games that day and then one was the all-star game because i raised the most money on my team it certainly wasn't based on merit uh you know hockey playing skill um, so I got to be on Eric Lindros's team. So it was half pros and half Joes. I fit under the Joe category and we were playing against the Leafs alumni <laughs> and Nick Antropov was one of the players. Now, most guys like barely even tried or like didn't try. Antropov tried and he dangled my freaking jock off. And, uh, I mean, probably, probably maybe saw one of my early YouTube videos and thought, eh, screw this kid. <laughs> Don Metz. Card number 88. He was born in 1916. Not quite. Not quite. We're still looking at, I think it's February 1903. He's the oldest guy. Ooh, might be beaten soon. Grant Fuhrer. Card number 26. A lot of people forget he was even a Leaf. And again, he was a Leaf for one and a half years. I want a Fraser McLaren card. 
I want an Andre DeVoe card. I want an Oli Jokinen card. I want an Oli Jokinen Leafs card. Let's get this done. Red Horner. Oh, Captains. This is an insert. Captains. Uh, Horner assumed the Maple Leafs captaincy after fellow Hockey Hall of Famer Charlie Conica was traded to the Detroit Red Wings in October 1938. But for most of his time in Toronto, the C belonged to Hap Day. Following his second season as a captain of the only NHL team he ever played for, Homer, Horner retired, but called what? But called serving as Leafs captain his highest honor as a hockey player. Okay, sorry, I read that whole thing. It was boring. Uh, card number nineteen, Red Kelly. One of my aunts was actually named after Red Kelly. True story. Jason Blake got his own card. He was a Leaf for two and a half seasons. You know, he had one really good season. His first season. You know, it's funny. When you look at Jason Blake's numbers, you wonder why he ever got, you know, run out of town. There, he, he signs his big deal. That was probably it. It was the money. Uh, he signs his big deal. Supposedly his possession numbers were good if you go back and look. Um... In his first year, where he was battling cancer, played in all 82 games, 15 goals, that's it. But he had 37 assists, 52 points, still pretty good. And then the following season, 78 games played, uh, 25 goals, 38 assists for 63 points. Wow. It's a shame. It's a shame. Money money can change, change perception. Uh, the next is a former co-worker. At Leafs TV. That's weird to say. Super weird to say. Mark Osborne. Card number 86. He was always very nice to me. And we got Rick Vive. Hey, we found number one. Rick Vive is number one. He's the number one card. What do we got? How many packs we got left? Okay, we got one, two, three. I only got three more packs. So I can get a jersey card and potentially keep this under an hour. I don't know. It's always fun when you look down into the pack and you go, oh, there's a thick one in there with two C's. No. We got a current leaf. We got Kyle Wellwood. Nope, this is Tyler Bozak. Card number 95. Terry Martin. You're not real. Are you? 1979 to 1984. I don't recall. I don't recall. I'm also not that old, so. Todd Warner. Who, he's on, where's Todd Warner on the radio now? Or, no, he's on TV now. He's on with Sportsnet. I like Todd Warner. Ian Turnbull. Card number 44. Nine seasons with the Leafs. Holy crap. We got an insert. Doug Gilmore. Memorable moments. Uh, May 3rd, 1993. The Maple Leafs barely had time to catch their breath after Nikolai Borshevsky's thrilling Game 7 overtime heroics ousted the Red Wings from the opening round of the 1993 Stanley Cup playoffs. Two nights later, Gilmore, who himself had four points in the decisive game against Detroit, scored in double overtime to give Toronto a 1-0 series edge over the Blues in the Norris Division Final. That goal is still incredible to this day. We got Jim Morrison. That's his real name. Seven seasons as a Leaf, 1951 to 1958. I I don't know. I like this player a lot as a kid, and I think he got a rough go. Freddie Modine. He was only a Leaf for three seasons? Get out of town. I think it's because his potential was always so high, and people were just impatient with him reaching it. Uh, in 76 games his first year, he only had six goals, followed by 16 goals, followed by 16 goals. He ended up having a pretty good career. And Bill Barilko. He disappeared that summer. He obviously ended his career scoring a Stanley Cup winning goal before dying on a fishing trip in a plane crash. There's kind of a song about it. It's very popular. R.I.P. Gord. Five seasons as a Toronto Maple Leaf. Very young man. When was he born? March 25th, 1927. Jeez, was not old. 
It's not old. Well, that's a bummer. He has a treasured relic card, someone's saying. Is that in this set? Or is that in another one? Come on, man. We got two more packs to open something cool. Ah, we got a very old player here. We got Charlie Conacher. Born December 20th, 1909. He was a Toronto Maple Leaf for nine seasons. <laughs> okay. Number seven, Glenn Anderson. He was a good Leaf. 24 goal season, 22 goal season. Now I know Bobby, uh, sorry, now I know Colton Norris is going to get a card. And if he doesn't, he should be insulted because Carlton the Bear has a card. 100. What does it say? Okay. 1995-96 to present. Born October 10th, 1995. Toronto, Ontario. Height, six foot four. Position, mascot. Catches left. That is true. No stats? Should put stats in, like, career accomplishments, like most cutest or something like that. Here we go. Memorable moments. Bobby Bond. Uh, one of the all-time tough guy moments in sports history. Bond scored the deciding goal of Game 6 of the 1964 Stanley Cup Final. I was right. Playing on a broken leg. Bond writhed on the ice in pain after blocking a Gordie Howe slap shot in the third period at Detroit's Olympia and was taken off the ice on a stretcher. Insistent on playing when the extra period began, he scored the winner just one minute and 43 seconds into overtime and also suited up for Game 7. Only after the series ended was it learned he'd fractured his fibula. That is absolutely crazy. Bobby Bond. It's amazing to still see him going out to stuff. Builder Lego, card number 65. Very interesting man. Uh, I saw him at a few uh, Leaf events when I was working for Leafs TV. I think he was like a fourth overall pick of the team. Uh, and he basically said something to me like, Hey, you seem you seem familiar. Something about his demeanor, just like the you know how old he was, and I think he had a dart. He reminded me of the comedian from uh, Watchmen. Just reminded me of him. And I explained what I do, and he goes, "Oh yeah." And he like took a drag, like while like nodding and smiling that he knew who I was. And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, you ain't hurting nobody." And I never really understood what that meant. And I couldn't tell if it was cool or terrifying. So anyway, oh, uh, Edzo, Eddie Olchuk, card number 78. It's amazing to still see him working. Uh, you know, everything he's going through. Wow, I didn't know how good of a Leaf he was. He was a Leaf for three and a half, sorry, yeah, three and a half seasons. In one season, he had 42 goals, 33 assists for 75 points. And the next season, he had 38 goals, 52 points, 90 points. Followed by uh, 32 goals, 56 assists. 88 points. Wow. His worst season as a Leaf was 75 points, and his least goal-scoring season with the Leafs was 32 goals. That's pretty good. Not bad at all, Edzo. Mike Johnson, who's currently doing his thing on TV, and they obviously think uh, very highly of him because uh, the Leafs never got Gretzky, but Johnson is 99. I still think they should ID him. Tom Fergus, card number 75. He's the last card of that pack. Born in Chicago, Illinois. And the last pack. There better be something in this pack. There better be something. I'm telling you. Better be something. But give me, give me like, Sergey Berezin's mouth guard or something like that. Give me Felix Potvin's jock. No, no, too far. Took it too far. Okay, last one. Harry Lumley. He was born in Owen Sound, Ontario, home of the Owen Sound Attack. Four seasons as a Leaf. Mike Gardner, world's fastest man. On skates, anyway. Man, he had a like a really good career and was not a Leaf for very long at all. And his only he only had one full season with the Leafs. Because I think he was on the Rangers, got traded to the Leafs, had 12 points in 10 games, pretty good. 
Then the following season was shortened by a lockout, so he was only a Leaf for 38 games there. Then he played 82 games with the Leafs, 35 goals, 19 assists. This guy was a bit of a goal scorer. Bit of a goal scorer. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, only, I want to say only eight players have scored 700 goals ever, something like that, and he's one of them. Seven or eight players. I think I, the reason I know that is because uh, I was writing about Ovechkin and how he was on pace and had a chance to do it. Jesus, that guy might get 50 goals again this year. Mike Felino, card number 46, inventor of the Felino Leap. Man, he didn't get many, uh, very many opportunities to do it with the Leafs. He was a Leaf for four seasons. Four seasons. But he got traded there from Buffalo. And he only had eight goals that season. I don't know how many of them were with the Leafs. Uh, then followed by 33 games with the Leafs, six goals. 55 games with the Leafs, 13 goals. Four games, zero goals. I mean, if you're not going to score very often, you might as well have a really good seller. Captains, Rick Vive. Rick Vive was only 22 when he was named the Maple Leafs captain on January 6, 1982, shortly before his predecessor, Daryl Sittler, was traded to the Flyers. The Ottawa native finished that season. We had an Ottawa native as the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs? It's okay, he wasn't a sense fan. The Ottawa native finished that season as Toronto's points leader with 89 and, his, and its first 50 goal score with 54. Vive topped the 50 mark in each of his... Yeah, we've already read about all that. Ally Afraidy, you don't want to block that shot. Man, he used to break like 100 miles an hour with a wooden stick. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. No, I have not gotten a Josh Levo card. I haven't got a Jeff Finger card either. I got Vinny Domfus, though. That was much earlier. Errol Thompson. Card number six. Imagine being named Errol. E R R O L. Sorry. Shout out all the Errols. Two cards left. I think I got Shaft in here. Mike Krushelnitsky. Card number 74. Cool. Wait. No. And the last card. He did score an overtime winner in the playoffs. Gary Volk. Now, it's amazing. We still talk about Gary Volk's, you know, series-winning goal against the Penguins. And, you know, the Leafs ultimately didn't even go on to do anything that year. But it, it just makes me wonder, like, 10, 15, 20 years from now, are we still going to be talking about, like, Kapanen's OT winner against the Capitals? Or Bozak's OT winner against the Capitals? <laughs> they were both against Capitals, same series. Makes me wonder. Well, that's it. So we had... 12 packs of 8 cards. We got this cool banner thing. No Halgill jersey card, like you just asked. Um, I mean, it was kind of cool. It makes me feel good to know that you can get stuff. Now I have this tin I can use for anything. I can store sewing equipment in it. That's it, really. I don't know. It makes me feel good that you can get jersey cards. I assume autograph cards or other kinds of memorabilia cards but uh yeah i spent 40 bucks on well at least for me it ended up being an hour live stream for you it might not be that i don't know new pot box you can't fit a pot in there you see because iggy charlie we're done with the cards come Charlie got up and he's stretching. Iggy's like, F off, Dad. Come here. We're going to play. We're going to play for just a little bit. Come here. Come here. Iggy. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. You want this? Where's the... Ew, this is wet. Get it. Come get it. You're not going to get it? Come on. Iggy, come on. Charlie's making you look like a jerk. Come here. It's like, it's like I caught a fish. I caught a fish, everybody. This is a really good ab exercise. Iggy, jump. Come on. Ah. 
Oh, what a catch! 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 And he's gone. These guys aren't terribly interested. Okay, so look, uh, we're at an hour, so let's end it here. Um, but I'm trying to, you know, if you've listened to the last few podcasts, you know, I'm, I want to do some more things with this channel. Um, I'm probably going to do another video right after this, actually. Uh, I'm going to record it. I don't think I'm going to upload it till tomorrow. I'm going to let this video breathe a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to do more, trying to do more. Want it to be good for you guys. I want it to be enjoyable. One of the things I did for this, so like there's monetization options. I think it might have made you watch an ad at the beginning of the stream. I'm not sure. But there there was an option to have, like, uh, ads you can't skip. And I was like, come on, for a live stream, no, get rid of that. So I got rid of that. So let me know if you had an ad that you couldn't skip. Because that will piss me off and I'll have to go figure that out. Um, and I hope I don't <laughs> freaking get my video demonetized again for no good reason. But, um, no, if you watch this, thank you very much. And if you like box openings, I'll do more with hockey cards or whatever else. Um, and let me know what else you want. Might, might even do just like a weekly Q&A. That's something I've considered too. So uh, until, until next time, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. Tell all your friends. And Charlie, say bye. Wow, that was a growl, and Iggy's all the way over there and doesn't care. Iggy, come. Come say bye. Come. Yeah, that's that's a sign we're done. That's a, yeah, we're done, we're done. I'm going to go let him outside. <laughs>